From the halls of their great house, there are assembled three who hope to one day be the world's greatest driving heroes. Created from the cosmic legends of the universe comes our team captain, the Vision, Bill Fisher. Their soon-to-be Wonder Woman, Vicky Fisher, and our Batman, the master of tools, gadgets, and all things mechanical, our mild-mannered soon-to-be millionaire, Alan Danvers. Their mission, to fight injustice, share what is right and wrong, to get you out of your house and come out racing with us and serve all mankind. They are the Garage Heroes in Training Team. Welcome to the Garage Heroes in Training Podcast. I'm going to be your host for this episode, and my name is Bill. Who is hosting with me? Um, Vicky. All right, and that's it again. Everybody else is traveling. We're getting ready for a race yep. coming up. Two weeks, and we'll be there down in Charlotte with Lucky Dog. Speaking of Lucky Dog, <laughs> we have one it. of Lucky Dog's sponsors with us. We have... Uh, he's a racing driver. He has started racing schools, which we probably talk about a little bit here. I think he even started a racing series. He's done it in Europe. He's done it in the U.S. He is either the person responsible or one of a small group of people responsible for getting hand-cooked motorsports back into the U.S. And uh, we thank him very much because we run RS4s on all our cars and he doesn't even pay us to do it. But, you know, just in case you were interested, we are open. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you ever need to uh, sponsor a really bad team, we're, we're, we're perfect for that. <laughs> so with us, we have Danny Van Dugan. Thank Welcome. you. How did I do on your name? It was good. It was, a good, it was, was, was good. Yeah, Dugan, it's, it's a place in Holland. It's, it's, it's funny in the U.S., I know. But okay. uh, you pronounced it really well. Thank you. Okay. Well, we, we, tr we tried. We, we had the spelling right. We just, uh, you know, that was one of the fun things in... Uh, when I went out there, I was over there for work for about three weeks and it was fun watching some of the people who had different backgrounds, try to tangle with the different words. You know, you'd see a, like a one girl was from Russia and, and she was, she actually came with us over to another trip to Hawaii and all the vowels were messing her up. And then vice versa, we had a girl who was grown up in Hawaii and she was used to all vowels and she went over and just way too many consonants. And it was just like, you know, people <laughs> struggle depending on where they grew. Yeah. So. Yeah. But that's enough about racing. Let's talk. No, that's not enough about racing. Let's talk about racing. So just in case people aren't familiar with you, and I do not do the best job of doing introductions, could you kind of give a brief introduction for yourself? Yes, and it um, could be personal it, or it, racing. It, it was really good, to be honest. I will, I will do it over a little bit. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, my name is Danny, Danny van Dongen. Um, thank you to being in the show, Bill and Vicky. I um, really appreciate it. Um, yeah, in the, next to my racing career, I started racing when I was uh, 15 years old. I won a scholarship, and uh, with that scholarship, uh, I was able to to start racing. Um, we all know racing is really expensive, so I was was kind of kind of lucky that that I had the ability and 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 uh, the talent to win the scholarship. So I started in in small front wheel cars when I was um, I won the, the the scholarship when I was 15, but I started racing when I was 16. That's uh, that was allowed back in the days in in, uh, in Holland. Uh, technically not because I had to I have to I had to go to Germany to get my race license over there and and then with a European license I was was able to drive in the in the Dutch Championship. So I started racing uh, when I was 16 in the in the Saxo Cup. It's um, it's a really small car uh, made in France, um, but it was really competitive and was fun so um, uh, after my second year I, I finished third in the championship and started winning winning and then I was able to to move up in in, in the racing but next to my racing career I also started uh, an event company uh, a race school uh, a tractor organization and a race series but also the tire business in Europe so um, yeah uh, what you just said you know before the before we start before we went live uh, about the uh, how to find your way in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the industry is not really easy. So I thought, let's make it more convenient and more easy. So that's what I did in Holland. And uh, when I was racing um, over over there uh, or in Europe, I, I signed a factory contract with, uh, with Praga. Uh, Praga made, um, makes go-karts, but also, uh, also race cars. And I needed a factory driver or a dry driver to do all the test and development. Uh, and that was me. Um, and I start showcasing those cars in Europe, but I also start showcasing them uh, 
over here in the US. Um, and um, yeah, in the, in, the, in, the, in the same time, I saw the opportunity to start uh, Hankook again in the US, uh, Hankook Motorsport. Uh, the, the street tires were, are of course in, in the US, but uh, Hankook tried to do it themselves really hard and, uh, and they failed. And I was doing a good job in Europe. So I, I told the management in Korea, say, hey, um, can I do it? So they start laughing. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I, th I think I think we made it happen, so that's really cool. Uh, not only me, of course, but my whole team. Um, we started from scratch, and, and I had to showcase the tires myself. Uh, I will never forget the, the first drivers meeting that I was in, and, and we were we became the spec tire in uh, at, at, in Florida, and, and I had to drive on the banking, and I had to prove the tire. Um, uh, doesn't fail on, on, on the high on the high speed banking and homestead of course so um, yeah we, we, we made it happen and um, from that point uh, uh, we expand uh, we expand um, too, too many more series and then for example of course lucky dog uh, but also um, we, ha we have to, we have the product range that we can supply grassroots racing and also professional racing mm -hmm. so um, not only lucky dog but we also sponsor uh, f4 and and now it's called fr uh, before it was f3 but it's now called fr it stands for formula regional series uh, so we have uh, professional racing in our portfolio um, um, and, and, and Crest Foods um, uh, racing on our portfolio and, and we can supply uh, with, 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 with the right products. Um, so yeah, we, we have um, a good future ahead of us because it's just the start. The company is just five years old. And um, uh, yeah, we have, to, we have to keep going. I'm competitive, so as everybody knows, uh, <laughs> I want to win, you know, in, in racing, but also with the, with, the, with, the, with the company. So that's, that was my, uh, I tried to keep it short, but a long introduction, sorry for no, that. that. No, that's fine. We, uh, if you ever need some pictures of some torture tests that somebody on our team put your tire to, we've got uh, some pretty scary stuff that your tire just said, yeah, no problem, let's keep going. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, yeah, that's that's what we do, and um, I'm really happy with uh, with the deal that we made last year uh, with uh, with uh, with uh, with Lucky Dog. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So uh, you know, let's let's stay on racing for a little bit. We'll get to hand cook in just a moment. But are there any uh, goals or dreams left to conquer? From racing point of view, um, sure. yes. Um, I had a dream last year that that uh, was that was happening. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, so. drove, I drove at Bathurst in in Australia. Oh wow! Uh, one of the best tracks I think in the world. Um, now I know for sure it, it's one of the best tracks. Um, yeah, it's it. You know, I I, I work for for Strom Motorsport. It's um, it's a team based in California, um, and. Um, they do a program uh, internationally. So, uh, and, and one of the races was planned uh, last year in, at Bathurst. So uh, we drove that race and I, I still drive uh, other races for them. Um, also um, back in Europe or, or wherever, you know, like long distance races. Uh, that's also my spe speciality, uh, speciality in the way that um, I always did a lot of long distance races in my, in my, in my career. So um, I still want to do, uh, of course, Lama. Um, I like to do Daytona, uh, mm -hmm. all the big races, all the big 24-hour races that uh, yeah. I, I didn't do, uh, they, I, but I didn't um, uh, drove yet. So right, uh, right. There's, there's some unfinished business there, for sure. Well, we will, hopefully, we will have uh, unrestricted travel next year and uh, we can resume normalcy. But uh, do you have anything else coming up for the rest of the season? Um, yeah, it looks like um, we will do uh, next week that I will drive in, uh, in FARA. There's not a championship we sponsor, but that's also a championship uh, most of the time uh, I drive. Um, so, and, and it looks like that we, that we will do the, the, the Thunder Hill race as well. Oh, the 25 at Thunder Hill? Yeah, yeah. We drove it, uh, I drove it a couple of times. Last year it was, uh, was uh, an interesting one with a lot of mud on the track. A lot of <laughs> mud, yeah. More mud than cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But uh, Tendale is always fun. It's, um, it's, I like it. I love it. Yeah, I think that's the, uh, you know, speaking for the, our team, I think that would be kind of our, our upper limit, you know, race. You know, if we can get to where we're semi-competitive in that type of race, that would be about as, uh, as much as we hope for, or at least as much as the non-teenagers hope for. So we'll get there. 
sometimes. Yeah, it's um, it's a fun race. It's always it's always excited. It's 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 cold, and and you have to motivate yourself in in the middle of the night to keep going. But uh, <laughs> um, it's um, yeah, it's 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 cool. I like it. So that's that's one of the races that's 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 on the on the on the schedule for this year. Awesome. We, uh, yeah. I think the biggest thing for us is the uh, the speed differential, especially in the dark. Uh, we want to be a little little more seasoned, a little more competitive, a little more capable. So we'll get there. Yeah, yeah. It's it's. But I have to say, you know, I drive last last couple of years. I drove with the Praga. It's it's a, it's a small prototype. Um, I have to say, you know, everybody had a lot of respect, uh, respect on the track for each other. Um, you know, everything goes goes along. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter if you drive Miata or, or a prototype. Uh, right. Uh, you know, what I said, they always put me in the car for a long time at that race because it's always dark and and and, <laughs> and <laughs> can I say it? She <laughs> yeah you can say anything you want we can we can take care of you it's so so you're one of those guys where they say hey anybody want to drive for the uh the long night stint and everybody else takes a step backwards and you're silly enough to keep standing in the same spot you volunteer yourself I yeah and 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 i have to tell a little bit more about my background um my father was working at the skid school in in, in holland oh wow um as a skit instructor uh, so uh yeah i'm 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 a little bit trained to to drive in on on their on their uh, on their on their on the wet conditions yeah well i i think i think a lot of people are pretty good at wet i don't know about last year's mud though that would seem to be uh no, the- <laughs> yeah there was an extra there was an extra dimension it was an extra challenge that's for sure yeah it was one step away from ice racing and you didn't have studs on your snow tires so it was uh, yeah it was it was the first one that I watched because we had a friend, um, one of the people we race with, and and uh, on our sister team, that won't won't acknowledge us, but that's okay. He was racing, so I watched the thing as much as I could. You know, eventually I went to sleep, but uh, I was just watching. I'm like, this this race is a disaster. What are these people doing? It looks like great yeah. time, but man, that was that was muddy. Yeah, yeah. So that was cool. So, um, how about that uh, hand cook? Cook uh, Motorsports in the U.S. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I, I, I do. It, uh, I started Hank Cook Motorsport also in the, in the Benelux. Um, mm-hmm. So what I said, I was racing over here, and, and nobody was 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 doing a good job, or the, the, they tried to do it themselves. So uh, yeah, we made the partnership, and, and I started uh, I started it over. And um, yeah, now you know, the first we started with with the slicks. Uh, the full the F200 slicks, and then uh, we moved to uh, we start carrying the DOTs, the set 214s, and uh, now we also carry the RS4 tires. So um, I started the company in Florida, and uh, we still got our warehouse over there, but our main warehouse is now in uh, Austin, Texas. Uh, that's also where I live now because it's super central. Um, it's convenient for shipping and also for. I got a track over here. I got an airport, and that's, and, a, that's a great city. It's too. a fun town. Yeah, it's a fun town. Yeah, yeah. We live. I live a little bit outside of the town, but uh, it's it's a fun town, and it's it's it it is expanding quick. Mm-hmm. It is. It is. But, so, uh, yeah. What what about that? What what about the hand cooped tire now? Now, are there anything special? with the tires or anything innovative that that uh, Hankook has taken on? Um, our tire, if you compare it with our competition, uh, we used the, from the slicks, uh, if, we start, we, we start, if you start talking about the slick tire, then um, we use the medium compound that we also use in, our, all, uh, in all our endurance series. Uh, mm-hmm. One of our main series is the 24 hour series uh, that runs uh, all over the world. Um, with the slick, what, what, what why, why they like our tire is because the tire is um, is stable for a long time. Our sidewall is a little bit stiffer than our competitors, so that works better in, in high speed corner because you have less flexing. Mm-hmm. Uh, a more flexing sidewall is better, for example, in chicanes again because then you have more movement in the tire and also movement more. You need more movement to your right. car to to go to from left to right. So our tire is it's 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 a really still stable, stable tire. Um, it's not super peaky. Uh, I call it picky because um, you know they, <laughs> they 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 drop off after a couple laps. Uh, a, a slick tire after three four laps, they 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 they, they start going down already. Um, is that is that the stuff that's on my car? 
<laughs> no, no, no. You, you have to, when you I'm have racing, to, I got bits of stuff on my car. <laughs> you have the RS4 tire. That's even more stable. So you're good. You're good. But with the slick tire, there's um, there's the best the best performance of the tire is most of the time in the third fourth lap, and then uh, all the molecules are coming together. I will not make it really technical. I'll keep it really simple. Uh, but then the tire is most sticky, and and in general, you're half a second till a second faster that lap. Mm -hmm. and at that point, you, it's going down. Uh, and uh, with the hand cook, um, our tires, you call it five, seven tens, and then it's stable for a long time. There, our, I will not name the, our competitors, but there are competitors in the industry that that even drops harder. So uh, that's that's with our slicks. Um, so a lot of people like our tire because you have you have a magic lap, but if you miss this magic lap, you still can run decent lap times. Okay. Yeah, I and mean, the the big reason we've decided to switch all our cars to it is the um there's a couple other tires that maybe give you one or two faster laps but your tire just wears forever and stays the same speed yeah. you know so i'll give up two laps that could be a sense second or a tenth or faster for 150 laps in a row that are just click 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 and and you know we we try to kill these things it's nothing personal but you know we try to kill these things <laughs> yeah, yeah no uh, that, 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 you have to do it i do it myself as well so <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah I think. Um, so no the r sport tire is it's super stable um um you know sometimes teams are, are telling me no no i will use one set for the whole race i said please you know i, I like to see i like to see i, I like to see um uh, some air in the tires after the race as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's stay with the the hand cooks just specifically for a little bit because I think you know them pretty well. Um, some people tried the RS three and yeah. they went to a competitive tire and they're they're unwilling or or not trying the RS four, which we think is a is a, a superior tire to the, all the other tires we've tried. The, could you kind of talk them off that ledge and get them over to the good side and bring them with us? Yeah, the RS3 is a good tire, but the RS4 is better. It's just, uh, it's, it's, an, it's a newer model, basically, from the mm -hmm. RS3. So it's a little bit updated. The middle is a little different, uh, the structure. But uh, they're really close together, but the RS4 is better again. It's yeah. just an updated tire. What is your, what is your best-selling tire? Our best-selling tire, that's... Um, yeah, that's, that's, I think in, 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 because, you know, we sell a lot of radical tires, mm -hmm. uh, because we have a contract with radical, uh, we are the spec tire for radical. So that's, uh, and, and you have a lot of radicals in the U S so, yeah. um, we sell a lot of those, uh, of course. Now what, now what are radicals? It's a car. Uh, oh, okay. A, a radical is a little prototype. Uh, okay. in the UK, it's a, it's a lightweight prototype car. Uh, you see them a lot at country clubs. Uh, and it's a fun car to drive. It's um, it's uh, yeah, it's 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 a, it's an open it's an open cockpit sports car. Um, oh, okay. And um, it had races um, in the U.S. of course. Um, and and yeah, we we supply them uh, already three years. So mm -hmm. that's one of our uh, best best selling products that we have. Um, but yeah. Okay. So if, so if we do tire basics like even below 101. If we're talking about a, a DOT type endurance, you know, the 190, 200 tread wear tire, they yeah. typically come with the three digits slash two digits, maybe two more letters and then two more. So you've got the, the, the thickness of the tire or the width of the tire, which, yeah. so that would be the first three digits that would be in, in millimeters, right? Yeah, it's in millimeters, for example, um, if we talk in the, um, an RS4, uh, a 245 or 255, uh, 3518, uh, right. 17. Um, the first, the first is the is the width, is yep. how wide is the tire. The second number is is the height, and the third is of course the the wheel size. Uh, the, from, from, yeah. So. Uh, and we mix all units and, possible, so you know we get millimeters yeah. with inches and. Yeah, it's 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 always my tip that I like to give um, to 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 the. Uh, to you guys and then all the guys who are listening um, always check your rim size your rim width um, mm -hmm. because all the manufacturers they use um, they, 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 they measure in a different way uh, so some of them 
they, they also uh, calculate the side wall or they calculate the height in a different way. So always double check the, the rim width, um, how wide the, the rim is. Then um, you, can, you can properly pick the right size for your, for your car. So a, a, super, a super fat tire on a narrow rim is not going to give you exactly what you're looking for or vice versa? No, no. Yeah, you know, sometimes it can work, but the, the spring rate, the, the spring rate of the tire um, is not calculated uh, on that angle. So sometimes right. you see tires, they're, they're super, they're, they're totally off the rim. Uh, they, you think, oh man, I have a really wide tire on my rim. I have more grip, but uh, the spring rate, the, the bouncing uh, doesn't work anymore because it's not calculated like that. So that's why I said always double check uh, the, the, the sizes with, with the rim width. Right, right. Yeah. And then is there anything that somebody would need to know about the construction of the tire or? Anything? No, um, the, our construction is in general really stiff. And with with some uh, with some, some with some tires we will we will share the spring rate, mm -hmm. but uh, not with our sports. <laughs> it's a secret. <laughs> now you gotta gotta keep some proprietary information, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we have to keep our advantage. <laughs> exactly. So, um, is there a general guideline? You know, I have a feeling that most of the people who get into this, especially when they're early, they're going to think they want the lowest profile, the fattest tire. Uh, is there kind of a, a selection window versus like speed or type of car? Or how, how do you, how do you know you're not, you know, essentially wasting money and, and not getting the performance improvement? With yeah, money? no, it's that, that's what I said. Always double check the, the rim width. Um, you know, the, What's also important, yeah, you know, the, the height of the tire, of course. Um, uh, does it also, you know, you have to see with the height of the tire, does it also work with, the, with your gearbox, with your gearings? Mm, yeah. uh, what's better for you, you know, like, like, for example, in the RS4, we have, um, we are the only one who are carrying the 275, 35, 18. Right. Um, I, I picked this size on purpose, uh, lower profile. Uh, kind of a 275, uh, 275 fits uh, in a wide range of rims. Um, and uh, I think this is a tire that, 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 that's, is, that, that really works because it's a little bit lower and then you cannot play a little bit with, with the rake. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's why I thought that that's a good tire to carry as well. Sure, sure. And then um, we're still on tire construction. I'm sorry. Is is the weight of the tire significant or is it the weight of the tire and the rim? I use rim. Some people use wheel, but when yeah, I say wheel, people um, get confused. So. That's also fun. This is a good question. And also I will have a funny answer about it. Um, in general, we are, we are the most heaviest tire in the, in this, in the industry, to be honest. You are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, I also like it to be honest because uh, we put a lot of safety in our in our products, so uh, we need more rubber. It's um, so and that that's that's uh, from that point you know uh, people can run and really long and really hard on our tires because we're kind of heavy, but uh, we, yeah we have safety. Right, and does does the amount of weight or or mass? I always think of it in terms of I'm engineer, so sorry. Doesn't that help you with your your um, wear and your thermal capability because you've got more material in there? More material. That's that's a good question uh, as well because uh, what you just said, you know, in the beginning of of, of this interview, uh, you said, yeah, it takes me a couple laps to 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 get my lap time, and and if you have more material, more rubber, it also takes a little longer to heat up. Mm -hmm. So that will answer right away your question as as well in the way that. Um, um, yeah, we have a little bit more rubber. So when it heats up, it heats up, of course, but it takes a little longer. So you need two, three laps to, to get the, the, to get the performance. Right. So, so most of our listeners are uh, probably run the, the 192, 200 treadwear tire series. You know, that's where they, they tend to compete. Uh, although we're going to talk about, uh, slicks and R comps in a bit, but, um, there's some, some mythology that I'm not sure is real that applies to or doesn't apply to these tires. So first one I'm going to talk about is 
uh, if I'm on 190 or 200 treadwear tires, when I'm uh, warming up, getting ready to take the green, is there any reason for me to be swerving back and forth and back and forth and back and forth across the track like the, they do on the Indy or F1? Yeah, sure. You have to do that. Um, yeah. <laughs> but not only that, yeah, I also tell you, everybody will know now, but uh, you also have to break a little bit because the, you, by six second, you, you, yeah, you, you create um, heat in the tires, of course, a little bit. And also there's always a little bit of more, of more oil on the tire. But yeah, I found that out last weekend. So that's, that's, so that's, that's why you, they do it. That's what you need off the, off the tires as well. But you want heat in the tires. You, wanna, you like to heat up your tires to, uh, to the best operation temperature and that you are in the tire window of the, um, or that in the temperature window of the tire. Right. So you have to six out a little bit. Uh, and also uh, what I do, um, I, I put my, my left foot on the, on the brake pedal a little bit and just drag a little bit of, um, of, of, uh, of, uh, of, 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 of temperature into my tires, uh, from the brakes. Mm. So, because then you will eat up, you will heat up the, the rim from inside, uh, the, 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 the temperature is coming from the brakes into the rim, into the tires. And then, uh, you can, yeah, you know, you have better first laps for sure, because you got the heat in it. Get more yeah. towards the I equilibrium yeah and always six sack on the line huh um uh, don't 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 clean up the whole track yeah so uh don't go if sometimes the track is really dirty always keep your eyes open of course yeah vicky Maybe doesn't like the marbles don't drag <laughs> don't dig them up in the marbles <laughs> yeah that's yeah, not I her favorite the, i got i i just have um uh, rubber marks that run up my miata that I train in and, and I'm just like, are they using slicks? What are they using to have all this rubber that's coming off and smacking into my car and yeah. leaving all this debris on it? Yeah. yeah. Are they, is that a normal tire uh, use or is that just a cheaper tire use? Oh, the, 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 the debris. Or all the, of them. The, it's all of them. It, 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 it's little parts of rubber. We'll get off, we'll, we'll, we'll scrape off the tire. It gets together and then you get marbles. Um, well, yeah. I mean, they're big. <laughs> yeah, 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 they're big. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they like each other. They are sticky. <laughs> she, she likes her. Uh, she likes her car clean. So, yeah. okay. Well, if you collect them all, you will get more tires. <laughs> I can okay. build my own. <laughs> so, so for these two hundred treadwear nominal tires, yeah. is there a break-in process, like to get the first heat cycle in, or is that? More for the yeah, to heat them up. Uh, always find the right pressure that you like to drive on, or that that the best pressure that 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 works for you uh, in the way for your car. What I see in in, in Everett's or in general with the, with the R four tire, um, most teams they drive uh, around in in a range from thirty five to forty psi hot. Um, so um, that's 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 where you that's your target. So you always have to play around a little bit with with the check temperature and uh, and your starting pressure to uh, get your optimum uh, optimum pressure. So yeah. so so the heat the but is there an, is there an advantage to heat cycling the tires like the day before to do it the first one? Um, with the R four, honestly, I, I have no idea. To be honest, um, I, the tire. Um, I, I know by, by or it works by by uh, set two fourteens, but um, with and, and and slicks, but heat cycle the RS fours. Um, yeah, you have to. You have, as I said, you have to get the first layer off maybe a little bit, but you will get the grip in into the tires really quick, and um, and they last already long. So uh, right. I, so I so basically, you just need to say. scuff them. Yeah. Get rid of the mold release and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't hear. So, so basically, for the RS4s at least, just scuff them, get rid of the mold release, get them, get a little bit of the farting compound on there, and then yeah. they should be good to go. So yeah. you don't have to do it like uh, ahead of time. You can do it no, basically no. day off. Yeah. Okay. What about storage? Uh, I've heard store a cold, dark spot in plastic bags out of the heat and out of the sunlight. Out of but, the sun, yeah. Out of the sun, that's um, that's one of the most important thing. Um, heat, you know, of course, you uh, affects a little bit, um, but so, sunlight is the worst for a tire. For a tire. 
So uh, keep keep them out of the sunlight and uh, and and store them in 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 a yeah, in in a, in, a, in a normal room. Um, yeah, that's okay. that's that's what, what what you have to do. Some yeah, you can put plastic around, but it's not it's not really necessary with the RS4. Okay. What about um, heat cycles? Does an RS4 heat cycle out, or is it relatively stable? I know that the the slicks and some of the the R comps and everything they they have a certain number of heat cycles and they just kind of yeah um, you probably know better than me to be honest I haven't seen it so I was just wondering if you if you thought it should be there you know no I think they they just run out of of life yeah. you know yeah. and, and then then yeah then it's over what I said uh, um, it's a tire that that's that's some what I said I'm sometimes I'm doing the engineering and at at at, at the racetracks and 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 then they said Danny no worries you'll drive in one set twenty four hours. And oh man, you know, like like I'm sometimes still surprised myself that that it can can work like that. <laughs> you don't want to know how long we've made some of them last, but that's okay. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a great no. tire. If it works, it works. You know, it like, does. like yeah. yeah, no, it's yeah. Um, the product is it's really strong. I have to say. All right, so I got one more easy one, and then I then I have one that's you know everybody wants to know the answer to. Yeah. So so Vicky loves detailing things and cleaning and making sure everything looks spick and span. So, is there any cleaning or care for the tire once we start using it that we need to do, or just run it till it drops? No, run until it drops. Um, yeah, keep keep your wheels clean. Uh, yeah. You know, like that, um, your rims and things like that. And 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 you know, we were told no armor all on the side because it gets slippery. So, yeah, that's you know, keep always an eye that the, the tire is not spinning on 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 the wheel itself. But um, mm -hmm. no, that's 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 basically it. Yeah. 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 We we one of us who's asking a lot of questions recently learned about the. Uh, Armor all. It makes things look good, but when when I got my first car, I armor all the uh, the stick shift. I armor all the pedals. I armor all the back seat, and I go out driving around, and my hands flying off the stick shift. I can't keep oh, yeah, on yeah. the brake, and my friends in the back seat are just sliding back and forth while I'm driving. So it was quite funny um, for me, at least. Anyway, okay. The the big one is everybody always sits there and says, "What temperature?" How do you measure the temperature? What pressure? And the hard part, I believe, is that it, it only matters what the pressure is when it's hot. And, you know, it's very difficult when they're going 100 miles an hour. That's a lot of revolutions to keep testing it with the needle. So, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. so what, what would kind of the guideline be for, is there a, a correlation between hot temperature and cold temperature? Is there a correlation between the pressure or a window where we want to be and then you kind of just test it and figure it out or in the, any guidance you could give would be greatly appreciated to the people who have no idea what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's why you're here on the radio on the race radios that, Hey, come in hot. That means that you come in uh, with a decent speed or call it full throttle yes. uh, to keep the temperature in your tires that the engineers or the mechanics can, can measure the tire in the pit lane with, with, mm -hmm. uh, as soon as they can. And uh, what we do as engineers, we always measure the spread. Mm -hmm. uh, that means that we measure the inside, the middle, and the outside. Mm -hmm. uh, just to see um, how, the, how the temperature range in, is, is over the tire. And you like to have it as close as you can uh, to each other. So, okay. And if it's too hot, on the, if, the, if the temperature is too high on the inside, you drive a little bit too much camera. Um, then you can take some camera out. Uh, if the temperature, for example, is too high in the middle, then you're a little bit overinflated. Mm -hmm. And if the temperature is higher than on the outside again, than the middle and the inside, then you, you probably have a lot of push. And, and, and if it's in the front, you have probably push understeer in the car uh, mm -hmm. by the exit of the corner. Uh, it can also be turned in, of course. But um, so that's that's what what what's what we always always looking for that that you have a good spread uh, in the way that you use the whole footprint of the tire right. uh, and and that the tire is working uh, if you if you for example drive too much camber and you don't uh, you have so much camber in your car that that the wheel is so under an angle that you don't touch the outside of the tire you're not using the whole footprint of the tire so uh, you basically drive on a smaller tire mm -hmm. um, so yeah that's that's always really important to see uh, if, if you if you get the temperatures right and the spread right and 
what I just said, you know, the, the range of what I see with, with, with our sport tires is 35 to 40 PSI hot. Uh, a Miata, for example, is most of the time like right, 35, 36. Mm-hmm. Um, and a little bit more heavy car drives uh, an e- a BMW E46 M3. It's probably mm-hmm. driving around 39, 40 PSI hot. Um, okay. Because you need a little bit more air for to carry the the the, the tire, right. um, so yeah, that's uh, and, you, and you like to get there um, as soon as possible uh, to get the temperature in your tire. So that's why you have to six second and, and brake a little bit to get the to get the heat into your tires. And you have to figure it out yourself in the free practice uh, what 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 what's your ideal uh, starting pressure. So uh, most of the time the tires goes up by, by four pounds, ours four, four, six pounds. So you mm-hmm. probably had to start um, yeah, just over 30, 32, 31. Mm-hmm. And then they will, you will get the, the right pressure for the tire window. So, so are, you, are you recommending going out on the track by lowering your tire air by probably about four points or four you, you, you start you start a little bit lower okay uh, so for example, you start 31 psi and then your your target is 35 psi okay and you have to figure it out yourself in free practice uh if the tire goes up four pounds but if the track is really if it's really warm out there you know like the track temperature is it's it's like a uh, hundred something. Uh, then you also need to realize that um, you have to start a little bit lower uh, with your pressure again, because you don't want to go over the two, over 35 PSI because you figured out yourself. That's your, your ideal spot. That's where you made your setup on um, and that your tires are working really well. So you have to test and, 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 and prepare yourself to see what's the optimum number for you. Mm-hmm. And also you have to, Keep in your mind, you know, for example, you have uh, a lot of turns to the left. Um, that means that right, the right, right side of the car will get uh, get hotter because it's more used. So the, your, your right front and your right rear will, will, will probably have a, a lower pressure to start again to get the 35 number all the way around. So you always play around with, with, with those numbers and um, yeah, get, get the right temperature for you for your car and the right pressure. Okay. Yeah. All right. We started with something we knew, sort of. Yeah. Does it make sense to you guys? No, it does. <laughs> it does. It, it does. <laughs> it just, it's the, it's, I'm about to ask the same kind of questions for slicks and R comps and things like that. And I have no idea what I'm doing about here. So, so the, I assume the storage and the break in process is kind of similar. Is the, is the temperature the same? Yeah, the, the the temperature range with the with the RS4 is um, it's 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 a it's a big uh, it's a big spread. Uh, it starts um, to calculate really quick, to be honest, in uh, in, in Fahrenheit. I work most of the time. We can do centigrade, and I'll fix it for you. It's okay. I'm I'm fluent in both. So. Oh, okay. You know, the tire window with the RS4 is like um, it starts around six degrees. Uh, yeah, fifty five already, and it goes over over a hundred easily. Um, so call it 110. Mm-hmm. So that's um, it's 200, yeah. almost 230. Yeah, 230. So the the, the range is kind of wide, and so yeah. Um, yeah, that's 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 where you want to be in. So that's what I said. You know, that's what you like to see if you if you measure the the, the tire that that you have this that you also have at least the minimum temperature on the outside of the tire. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then if you doesn't work, uh, that still works, but not you will not you get not optimized right, right. Not optimized. so so if we switch over to the to the slicks and the, what they call in the r comps i don't think it's a separate tire but whatever um is the temperature or the pressure ranges vary for those as well on the slick on the slick uh, is a little bit lower in in temperature uh, uh-huh. or in pressure and and the temperature range uh, with the slick um is goes from uh, it's, it's a little bit no, more narrow. Uh, if you if you talk about the the medium compound that starts by uh, 65 till till 100, okay. that's optimum. Uh, it can handle more than 100, but then um, falls off. Yeah, it falls off a little bit, and 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 and, and finally, you know, if you if you 
you can get blisters, but that that starts right. by <laughs> forty degrees. It's 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 rare, uh, thankfully. <laughs> okay, and and then for our uh, for our short time friends, how do the autocrossers take advantage of this? Because it seems like you know they're basically start from sitting still automatically you know within the first few seconds going as fast as they can as quick as they can and then by the time the tire starts to feel some of the heat from doing around these turns and getting applied with the brakes and sliding and, and whatever you're at the end so you never really yeah, hit yeah. that steady state stuff so so could we help those guys out anyway is there is there tricks or is there are, a, are tire warmers allowed uh maybe i don't know <laughs> There are tire warmers. There are tire warmers. There's the ones you buy and the ones you make. I know about those, but uh, um, yeah, with with autocross, um, yeah, but, but our tire is more made for longevity. Right. So, uh, right. Um, to be honest, I don't think we have the best tire for it, uh, autocross. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's fine. So speaking speaking of your tires, while we're here, we got one more one more RS4 question. I think we only got yeah. one. that. How bad is it to drive these on the street like regular? Is that a good idea? Oh well, yeah, right. it, it's allowed. It's DOT approved. Uh, is it going to wear out quicker than like a comparative high performance summer tire? It, 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 it's a two hundred thread wear tire, so it probably wears out a little bit quicker than the, if you have another number. But um, my biggest concern with with the RS4, um, if it rains really bad, really heavily, then mm -hmm. uh, be careful. You know, it's, okay. It's, uh, um, We've done that too. It, it's, it's a threaded yeah, back. Your, yeah. shoe, your, uh, your car gets a new pair of shoes and you want to start getting cocky on the street. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, that, that's true. That's true. So with, um, um, and in Lucky Dog, that, that's, it's, it's also allowed to, uh, to, to cut the tires open. Really? Uh, cut yeah. the tires open? Open the yeah, yeah, yeah. Jason keeps that for himself. He's, he He's doesn't. He doesn't, he doesn't tell boy. us. <laughs> uh, Jason! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not like Jason's worried about us going too fast. That's for sure. So. Oh, oh no, he, he, he keeps it for himself. Could um, be. Could be. Yeah, yeah. No, he even he even showed me a picture how to do it, and I said, "Yeah, that sounds good to me." Uh, Anybody who cuts um, up your tires is a good plan for you because that's another tire you get to sell, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 but, but it's also uh, you know you can also drive on on, 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 on on when the race is dry. But you can you can with the R fours you can um, cut the lines open. Uh, mm -hmm. Be careful, of course, and, and yeah. do it safely. But yeah. um, then you make a little bit more pattern in the tire, and and it can handle a little bit more water. Yeah, we. Uh, it's, a, it's a trick. It's, it's a secret now. It's only for you, listening. Only for, only your... for our, only for our family, apparently. Yeah, yeah. yeah I see that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, as I said, and, and the reason that we do that is that, yeah, you know, the tire works in the rain, of course. It's, mm -hmm. it's it's proven, but it's not. Yeah, you know, it's it's a sporty tire. We don't have so much uh, so much threat. <laughs> so, so speaking of a sporty tire, so we have a a friend who works at a, a local tire shop, and he helps us out a lot. And he. He's very jealous when we go in with our RS fours, saying he can't even get them. Is that is there a restriction to who can buy them? Or oh, I have plenty in stock. Oh, okay, All right. no I'll, worries. <laughs> I'll, ta I'll talk to him. I'll say, you know, you've been, you've been steered wrong. I know a guy, so uh, that'd yeah, be great. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's also, that was also the problem. You know, it's it's um, we run the motorsport division, and we have, you know, we are Hankook. But also, we are also separate. Separate, um, okay. Separate. You know, but, we are. Yeah. We are. We, we do the motorsport tires, and we don't touch the street tires. And, and oh, maybe he's talking to the Hankook street tire guys then. And vice right. versa. Um, Could be. But Jason was so. Uh, yeah, you know, Jason. Jason came to me a year ago, and he said, "Hey, Danny, um, we have to do something because." Uh, the tire works really well for our series and everybody loves the tire and but we cannot get the tire. I said, okay, let's make a program. Let's make a, um, let's, let's see what we can do. Yep. Um, but there's another, and there's somebody else on the, on the internet who also sells those RS4 tires and they never uh, have them though. No, they run out. So, and then, and, and so I discussed it with, with Hankook. I said, Hey, um, this is a race series. 
I know it's also a street tire, but we can use it in, in, in racing as well. It works really well, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Let's make a program. So that's how it started. And, and that's why we're carrying uh, also now the, yeah, like, like, like the Arch Force in big quantity. Yeah. Um, so we have the tires. Okay. All right. Well, we, we know but how to get yeah, you know, So it, it, if, if they need them, uh, let me know. <laughs> okay. We can do that. Yeah. Um, let's go back to our, to our fiction or nonfiction. Is this true or not? Does it matter if I fill these tires with air or nitrogen or carbon dioxide or? Um, yeah, it, it makes a difference. It's true. So why would I want to? Um, because that's also what we do with our tire service. We don't put nitrogen in, in, the, in the tire, but we do uh, dried air. Okay. Because so we, don't want water, we don't want water in the tires. Uh, because so it's the water, the, not the gas. It's not the gas, and 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 and, and nitrogen really works for really high speed. They use that a lot. Um, for example, in Le Mans, you know, you go over mm -hmm. 300 kilometers an hour, and 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 you don't want really really strange strange wear or strange 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 um, strange uh, signs. Right. So um, yeah, it's always good to um, yeah make sure that you don't have water in your tires. That's the most important thing. That's the tip I like to give. So it's not a reaction between the rubber compounds and the air. It's more the the water turning to steam. That's the yeah, yeah. It's getting warm. You know, it goes to hundred degrees, or, or and then the steam, and, and you want to have stable, stable, stable tire pressure. Okay, so you're a race driver. You're a tire professional. You get the answer to the question that I can never find out. Everybody's uh -oh. always telling me I got to keep records of my tires. I got to keep records. How do I do it? What am I keeping? And what's it going to tell me when I look? Because I could, I have more than willing to keep a book of stuff, but if it doesn't ever tell me anything, I just wasted a lot of time. So is there, is there like a, I have no idea what they're talking about. They're like, you got to keep records. I'm like, of what? I mean, you, you, you like to, you like to know how much, how much where or how much hours you put in your tire. So to print the timing and scoring, uh, okay. uh, and then, and then, you know, uh, how many laps and how much, how, how much time you, you, you have on this tire, uh, okay. you know, better than me, but the hours for how long you can drive on those tires, um, six, six race days, <laughs> six race days. Six so race but days. after six race days, they're probably done. They're, uh, they're pretty cooked yeah 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 so yeah, that's that's why you keep a record on the tire and and see how they wear and, and how they survive yeah okay um do you have anything new or exciting that you want to break break news on this worldwide uh news channel that we aren't part of anything uh, coming rs5 maybe rs5 not yet uh, okay <laughs> I, I, oh yeah, I got two eighty fives coming in in big quantity. <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, R scores, yeah, it's uh, that'll make our then, Corvette friends happy. Yeah, and, um, yeah, we try to uh, keep expanding in sizes that we can can but I, that we can can supply everybody the right size. Um, so um, and and I also got them in nineteen inch now, so that's also really nice. Ooh. I yeah. just got some nineteen inch rims, so I might have to yeah. do that. Yeah. So, uh, what else? Um, uh, what else have, do I have to come in soon? Um, I think also the two twenty five, forty five, seventeen. That's not uh, on the lucky duck list either. Um, right. That's a little narrow. Yeah. Thirty five yeah. and forty five. Right. Yeah. 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 So uh, yeah, that's, that, that's the news. <laughs> so, um, uh, your thoughts on uh, on how? I mean, Hankook just in general, I mean, do you have any good stories? Do you have any, uh, any stories that just kind of went south, but you were able to rescue? <laughs> um, the good news. And it could be just your own involvement with Hankook. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, let's, let's, let's check my book. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm working on, uh, what I can share. Um, no, no breaking of NDAs here. We're, we're, no, this. yeah, some of the things I cannot share yet. <laughs> yeah. But uh, what I said, um, you didn't have any issues like not putting the tire on and driving down the road, and like hey, my husband, that was me. It, yeah, he's a, he's, a, he's a professional. I'm, okay. I'm still in training. Yes, Bill had the tire come off and hit a house on the gas I, line. I didn't lose it. I knew where it was. <laughs> I just saw it go. The away. whole the whole wheel came off, or only the tire? Whole wheel. 
No, you only do it once and then you know. But, yeah, but, but, the, but the one time I did it, it jumped the guardrail, went through some bushes across 200 feet, and then hit a house. But it didn't just hit the house, it hit their gas meter. It's a good story, to be honest. Yeah, no, it's not. It's, it's a good story when you're not the guy driving the truck with the yeah. tire sitting in somebody's front yard, but that's okay. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I also lost a, a wheel. I lost a whole wheel hub one time in the, in the really oh, no. fast corner. Uh, but I was lucky. I can I can still when I when I'm telling it I'm still laughing. So that's a good thing. I was I said I was really lucky. Exactly. Um, Everybody keeps saying they lost the wheel. I'm like I knew exactly where it was. It was right over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't <laughs> lose it at all. That was it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I told you the secret about the new size that we have coming in. Um, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, and then that's that's. Um, yeah, so, on, 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 on some contracts, but I cannot tell about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You can say you're sponsoring us. It's fine. We, we, <laughs> yeah. I hope I hope I can enjoy a race really soon again. I had really good fun when I was driving at Laguna. Ah, so very what, nice. were, what were uh, some of the changes? You, you were saying that, that you know, you kind of looked at Hankook and, and was just basically saying, I know how to sell this. So that's kind of how you got in, right? Oh yeah, yeah. You, you know, like like I, I, as I said, I'm born in I'm born in, in this industry. So uh, and I know a little bit uh, in racing. So I'm, I'm a, as a driver and, and 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 my way around with championships and things like that. So um, yeah, we're corporate or you're not corporate, you know? Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, we, that that's that's how we made it happen uh, in racing. Uh, what, what you tried to explain to to your friends. If you, if you know your way around, it's not that hard. It's a small group, and everybody knows each other. Yeah, but it's, it's it's really small group. You know, mm-hmm. you need you need to you need to, you need to know where to go and 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 find your way and then have your reputation and things like that. So uh, um, that that was the hardest part for for Hanko Corporate uh, to deal with. Oh, they needed they needed an inside guy. Yeah, yeah, that was so, me. <laughs> they- <laughs> <I'm>, to understand <laughs> that you got to understand your customer, and if you're used to dealing with. Uh, you know, a Prius guy, it's a little different than dealing with some crazy fool who's out there banging around in their E36 M3, you know, playing lucky yes. dog. So, Do you find that Hankook is, is relying a lot on marketing or a little bit of marketing and a lot of word of mouth? Um, I try to change them with marketing because they, <laughs> I, I like baseball, but I like racing more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, uh, but, uh, word, word to mount is, is always the best to be honest. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I, you know, I can see it. I was last weekend in Utah and, 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 and there was a team that was driving there, uh, as well, the six hour race. And, and, um, uh, we had the promo- promotion uh, over there. Um, and they said, no, we know you guys from lucky doc. So I think, Hey, yeah, it works. So, uh, well, yeah, that's how we got it. Word of mouth. Word of so. mouth is the best. And, 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 and. You know, um, my philosophy is it's you start learning the product uh, at, a, at at grassroots raising, and then you probably go up, and the next step will be a DOT, and then the next step after will be a full slick. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't try yeah. it now because you know you never want to go back anymore. So I told I told you now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you came with our source, um, no price and quality wise, it's a, it's a really good tire, um, and, uh, and 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 it really works. So. Uh, yeah, no, that's 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 important, and and we try to expand uh, more in the, in, the, in around California. Um, so yeah, um, okay. East we have we have covered, and we like to do more in the West Coast, uh, and that's why I was sponsoring the Utah race, and why we're sponsoring the Thunder Hill race again, and, and keep going mm-hmm. with Lucky Duck, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we we need we need to have more branding, and 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 it really works to to showcase the the tires on the track because then people can see it themselves. Yeah, I noticed that our Lucky Dog hand coop tires have Lucky Dog on them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we put a little sticker on it. Uh, yeah. Also, <laughs> I was like, oh, we, we got hand coop Lucky Dogs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, No, it's also for the contingency um, because we are not uh, 100% exclusive with, with our short tires. 
So mm -hmm. that's why we also uh, call it stamp them with the, with the little Lucky Duck sticker. Oh, uh -huh. It was I awesome. I also put the Lucky Duck sticker on my helmet, to be honest. I like, <laughs> I like, I like, the, I like the Lucky thing. Yeah. 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 We have it on our car trailer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Without luck, you will not win any race. So that's, that's you, know, you can be super fast, but you always need the luck on your side. So that's, yeah. uh, that's or, you, or you're not super fast and you still need the luck on your side, which is our case. Always, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, otherwise, you will lose a wheel, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. So, Danny, now is the time for our Fast and Furious story time questions. Okay. I'm sitting I'm going to get to know you a little better. Yeah. I'm going to have you get to know yourself a little better. <laughs> Scary so, sometimes. Are we ready, Bill? I'm always ready. Hit it. Okay. What was your first car? My first car, it was um, an Opel Combo. Oh, okay. And <laughs> as a little fan, um, yeah. and uh, it was great because my go kart just fit in the back of the car. So uh, <laughs> a couple couple yeah, inches of square, but I, not. I, many. I was I was racing for Marcos for the factory, and uh, it's a Marcos's GT GT car from the UK, and the factory was based in Holland. And uh, I was I never had the ability to do some co karting because also co karting is really expensive. My parents didn't have the money for that either. Right. So uh, I was driving for this team, and and they gave me a co kart. So I was really proud, and my co kart was always with me, and it 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 it, it fit it it totally it, it fitted in my in the little fan. So uh, I was driving everywhere with my co kart. Uh, I have go kart will travel. Go <laughs> kart travel, that's for sure. So I was really happy with my small Opel combo. Uh, I was driving on diesel, and diesel, the diesel price was kind of cheap in Holland, so uh, mm -hmm. it worked out. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So it was so it was always full throttle because the the speed limit on the on this car was uh, it was not was not go or fa it was not going faster than uh, call it than than. than Call it 70 miles an hour. Wow. So I always had the feeling that I was in a race car because it was always full throttle. I put more <laughs> air in the tire to go faster. <laughs> that slow car fast thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so what was the worst car you've ever had? That's a good question. The Opal. <laughs> the, <laughs> the Opal. <laughs> uh, the Opal. Oh, no. I, I, I could drive it. Um, I've done worse than that. Don't worry. Uh, that's a good question. I have no idea about it. I, I, I always, it always worked out. And okay. I, as long as I get from A to B, I'm fine. <laughs> okay. Well, if you, if you ever need a worse car and you're bored and want to come to a race with us, we've got cars that are horrible. So you can come. <laughs> okay. I will make it happen. There we go. So, uh, what is the car that sticks out in your mind from your family? Um, I think, I think uh, a Formula Ford, oh, um, um, because, um, my father collect those and, um, we always lived for a long time, uh, when I was living by my parents, uh, we always lived for a long time in a really small condo because it was always every year, the discussion, it was not even a discussion. It was a new kitchen or, uh, or an another, another race car. I think I think you can answer the question yourself. Yeah, <laughs> it was always uh, the the kitchen stayed. <laughs> the race car came. <laughs> see, see, Vicky, it's not just me. I know. Yeah, first, yeah. First, you have to admit you have a problem, though. I, you have a problem, Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what is the one thing that no one knows about you that would surprise them? Um, yeah, I like ballroom dancing. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love to do it with Nikki, um, my partner, and she also works in the company. <laughs> uh, because I really like ballroom dancing because you you get into a flow, um, same like racing, and mm -hmm. you don't want to screw it up. You feel when you screw it up. You know, you you feel when you're out of the rhythm. I'm really good in that, by the way. But you feel when you do a wrong step or, or screw it up, and, and and that's also in racing. You know, you don't people forget it's still a team sport mm -hmm. and the yes. driver is just the last 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 thing that that need to be done and that's most of, you know that's done by the driver but the dancing is same thing you don't want to screw it up for for your team or for your partner and uh, i really that's awesome like that. <laughs> a lot of people will not expect this but i i, <laughs> I can yeah, do it and girls love it <laughs> like yeah. yeah so um 
Yeah, let's see if it fires back to me. If, if, if I will, I will, we will know if, if, if how many people will listen to this broadcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Well, don't, don't, don't call us back and say nobody asked you. It's okay. Oh, I'm fine with that. Oh, <laughs> stop. <laughs> we'll ask you when we see you. Don't worry. Yeah. So are you an automatic, a stick, a PDK? Don't care. Just give me a car. I really don't care, I, I, you know, because um, I'm getting old. Uh, I got the sim sitting here. Mm -hmm. I'm not used yet. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't put RS4s on it. You know. But on the other side, I got my sim sitting here. Um, but uh, what I want to say with that, uh, I'm kind of old fashioned. So uh, um, I, can, I can drive stick ship really well. I can side flip, double clutch, uh, all, mm -hmm. all those kind of things. Um, old school. Old school, yeah. yeah. So, um, so yeah, I, I love to do that. So, I also like to drive historical cars from that point of view. So, so I've got a marketing opportunity for you. Okay, you need to talk to the guys at iRacing, and you need to get them to put the RS4 onto the the Miata they have there, because that thing can't stick. It's like driving on Teflon. It's just that car is just a mess. And uh, the Miata in the iRacing sim. Oh, we have to make a lucky duck series in iRacing. Well, I said, I'm, I'm, st I'm, still, I'm still new with, with, with it. Um, I had no time to fire it up yet. Um, I shipped it over from, 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 from Europe. And, it's uh, a winter thing. It's a winter thing, right? Yeah. It, it, yeah, you know. Afraid. If I start liking it, I'm, 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 I'm playing all day. I also have to work sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there is that, yeah. 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 So um, do you have a favorite race car driver? I have a lot of respects for, for many drivers. Um, um, you know, I, I always like to, to see if, if sometimes somebody has a certain craft or, or some talent, it's, 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 it's good to see. I think we're all really proud about Max Verstappen, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, he's Dutch and he's doing really well in, uh, in F1. And we never had uh, uh, a Dutch driver like, like him in the F1 before. We had more Dutch drivers in F1, but, but he's... Uh, He's really talented and he's not a level. Um, so yeah, um, a lot of respect for him. Nice. Yeah. All right. So does it matter or front wheel, rear wheel, four wheel? Don't care. Just give me a car. Uh, front wheel, rear wheel. Uh, I'm fine with it. Not so good. I'm, I never drove a rally car, a rally car uh, or a professional rally car with four wheel mm -hmm. drive. So I, I cannot, I have no idea about that, but uh Front wheel, rear wheel, I can, I started with front wheel. Uh, I drive still, you know, in my school, a lot of front wheel cars, but uh, um, no, I don't care. Okay. You have to, you have to keep the, the, steering, the steering wheel in the right position. That's key. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So um, when, when, when you were growing up, um, or maybe even not, so much growing up anymore uh, do you have that one <laughs> do you have that one car that got away uh you mean one car that i really want no well, that, one that you had that that you don't that, have anymore that you don't have anymore that maybe if you had a little bit more experience time Money, whatever that space. you wish you would have yeah you wish you just would have still had um something you want back well, I'm back, you know, that's, that's, that it's a family thing. We don't sell cars. <laughs> <laughs> See, I knew I liked Dad. it. Dad. <laughs> um, so the cars that I started with, um, yeah, I have one regret, but I didn't own that car, but I wish I bought it. It was an M3 E30 uh, Sokoto. Oh, okay. Um, that was also when I was driving for the Marks factory. They, they said, I just came from front wheel cars. And they said, okay, now you have to drive a Marcos uh, rear wheel and, and you need to get trained and you need to get prepared. So uh, they, they was really kind. They gave me a co-kart, a shift of co-kart, uh, what I just told you. Mm -hmm. And uh, they also gave me uh, an E30 uh, M3. Mm -hmm. I wish I had it. I still yeah. had it. You yeah. know, like, like that's it's that's an awesome really car nice. to drive and, and uh, the value went up like, like really, really, really high. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. They just keep going. I, yeah, they keep going. They're rare. Yeah especially if they're not already used up. Yeah. So 
we usually we ask this to to people who haven't driven as fast as you but we usually you know the question we always get is like how fast do you go and it's really yeah, nothing, yeah. there's really nothing impressive so but just in case what's the fastest you've driven and in what car and if it was at a track that would be good to know if it wasn't at a track we'll just keep it between us um Unless it's the Autobahn or something. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. That was, that, you, 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 you take my words, Bill. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, and on the Autobahn, uh, the fest I drove was was with. Um, I also worked for Corvette. I drove for Corvette, and, and, and um, so uh, in in Europe. So I was driving in a Corvette on the Autobahn uh, in, in two three hundred kilometers an hour. Oh, very nice. Uh, so that's that's fast. Uh, yeah. Also on the autobahn, it's allowed, but I think still it's you know, yeah, you, you have to pick the right spot and and at the right time of the day to to do that. Yeah, um, it's and and there there yeah, so that was the autobahn that's allowed. Um, in Holland, you cannot really speed. They have a certain, they have trajectory control, so they always catch you. Um, yeah, I always, I always I always have fan mail over there. Um, <laughs> and on, the, on the racetrack. Um, uh, uh, yeah, but what's, you, you don't watch speed so much because, you know, uh, it, it, it just comes. But I think um, on Monza, Monza has a long straight or Spa from has a long, long straight as well. Yeah, we drive around uh, with the Audi, was around almost 300 kilometers an hour. It's, it's fast. It's fast enough. That's, that's very fast for a race start. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, you know, just how fast you go when, when you go off. Then you, then, yeah. then you see where you're stopped. That's far. <laughs> I always, uh, whenever we go off, I always think that I could go so much faster if the track was made of grass. Because I swear, once I touch the grass, I am just infinitely fast. It's like, whoosh. <laughs> <laughs> you're not doing it quite right. I try. <laughs> so, um, have you ever been in, involved in building race cars? Yeah. Um, when I was driving for for Marcos, uh, Marco Marcos, when I said it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a manufacturer. It was founded in 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 the UK, and they they the factory was based in Holland. Uh, so uh, I had a factory contract for with them for um, four years. Uh, so um, my teammate, uh, that's maybe a name that that you recognize uh, over here in the US, was Mark Gusses. Mm -hmm. um, and he was driving. He's now back in Belgium, but he drove uh, in IMSA for a long time uh, for Riley. And another, one, another, another, uh, another teammate was Jeroen Blakemola. Uh, he also uh, we worked really close together with Marcos and also with other teams. And um, yeah, I think he's, he's now on his way to the US. He drives a lot in the US as well. So uh, when you drive for a factory, you always. Um, um, part of part of your job is is is, is development. Uh, so I did it by Marcos, but I did it even more by Praga. Uh, Praga, they decided to build their own race car. Uh, the, this small prototype that I was driving uh, at Tenderhold last year. Uh, we finished th third overall and, and second in class. Uh, um, but wow. that 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 car, it's it's a car where I um, I was testing days uh, days after days after days with that car and and and. And then make make it reliable, reliable of course, uh, like really solid, um, but also uh, easy to drive, safe to drive, and and that's what we did. Uh, that's what I did um, for this for this manufacturer. Uh, awesome job, to be honest, uh, to do. Uh, it's always fun. A uh, lot of driving. Um, you know, I drove. Uh, I spent a lot of time in Slovakia, Eastern Europe, to to get this done. Um, so that's 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 that's. I was yeah heavily involved in in this project. Yeah. So, so if you could build a dream car for a race, what would your starting car be? Yeah, but that's also really personal, to be honest. <laughs> no, like, 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 no. It's your I, podcast here, you know. It's yeah, yeah, about yeah. You. That, I mean, that, we know you ballroom dance already. I mean, we might as well. <laughs> yeah. if, if you don't want to start with a car, if you wanted to build a car for a series to race in, you could do that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think a V8 engine. Um, that's, that's, that's probably, you know, I like to have the torque and, uh, you know, like the power. Mm -hmm. uh, and it had to be a little bit difficult to drive. So, uh <laughs> Because yeah. that's that's where we where we can make the difference as a pro driver. Mm -hmm. 
but uh, yeah, something like 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 um, I really like the Markos that I was driving was a V8 um, Ulan gearbox, um, um, uh, strong like 600 plus horsepower. So uh, yeah, sometimes you're a passenger, you know. So uh, <laughs> I think um, and and enough arrow. I also like to take a lot of speed with me into the corner. Um, okay. I, I really like that. That's what you have in the Praga, but also in the Radical, for example, or in the prototype or in the P3 car. Mm -hmm. I really like the P3 car. It had, uh, yeah, it 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 it's um, it it had it all. I think it 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 it's 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 uh, it's it's a fun car for 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 if you have some experience. You know, it's not a car to start in. I think. No. Yeah. So if you were if you had a desert island. And you had a racetrack on the island. What would be Ugh. the top five? I know Vicky hates this question, but you know it, where I'm already started. <laughs> you, have, you have like five cars you'd want to have on your island with you. Oh, <laughs> um, of course the Praga. Mm -hmm. um, that's also the reason that why I bought one last year. Uh, not even to drive it, just to have one because it's my my little child. Ah, there you uh, go. That car go with me. Um, it's probably also the, you know, I like to have my memories the, the, with the cars I drove in the past. Sure. Um, it's probably a Marcus as well, uh, the LM600. Uh, it's a beast. You have to see it online if you have to uh, Google it. You we will. See, love it. Do, you, do you need an Opal with a go-kart in the back? Or you know? <laughs> <laughs> I passed that stage. I, I, keep, I keep my shifter. I still have my shifter go-kart. I have okay. to do it often because it's, it's one of the best trainings, I think. You know, mm -hmm. you get super strong out of it and then it's fun to do. You can right. only, only crush your ribs. That's basically it. But <laughs> for that. Um, and get really, really tired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I like I think uh, something like a GT3, um, okay. but also I think also a Miata just to have fun and and, mm -hmm. and uh, like 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 don't care about anything and and race really hard with somebody. So at least we need two Miatas because I like the competition. I have to have fun. I like to have a smile on my face when I'm driving, you know. And that's that that comes when you have a cool a cool uh, cool competition, you know. I also get it when I'm sitting on a rental co kart. It's 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 just the competition and, and the overtakes and, and, and try to mess up with my competitor. Exactly. I mean, it is almost like a go-kart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why I'm telling, you know, right? that's why I'm a picket. So we need two of those. So uh, we have only one left, right? <laughs> So Maybe we just, need to be just to have fun. We have spec. We just have a spec Miata series. So that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's you know. I think you know. We have to. We have to. We have to have. So that's um, yeah. It ends up quick. There are so many cool cars out there. Yeah. Um, um, that's that's. It's hard to pick uh, even five. It is. Yes. That's why we started with three, and we're like, I need at least five. And then, you know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 It's, so, it's if you could. Um drive or race a car from any decade in the past what decade would you choose for the rest uh, of your life you've only got cars from a decade wow yeah um if i can pick whatever i want then i can dream Let, let's 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 pick uh, hamilton's car now because i want to know <laughs> how good it is <laughs> i want to feel it <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you're yeah. taking the 2020s. Okay, so you're, you're speculating on the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, like, 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 yeah. Let's. Although the future will be will be interesting, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 probably mind blowing what that car can do. I would, I wouldn't even think I could get it to where I could warm up the tires personally. You've got a chance. I've got no chance. I don't know either. It's it's yeah. it's um it's a hard job. Those guys. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I love to try. I don't think. <laughs> <it's true. laughs> oh, I think. I think everybody wants to try. I just I have this this bad yeah. feeling of reality hitting me if I got in the seat. I, well, I, first off, I don't think I'd fit in his seat. I'd need a bigger seat. Uh, okay, so Jeremy Hammond, May, Chris, Matt, other. Sorry. Yeah, there we go. Ah, oh, there you go. That's fine. It's the Top Gun, Top Gear host. I would say Top. Oh, Gun. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the stick. <laughs> oh, the stig. Oh, very. That's a. We haven't had the stig as an answer. That's we awesome. Had the stig. Stig's nice. awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, you drive awesome cars and 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 and, and you have some music on and and, and just try to to smoke it. There you go. I guess I guess stig fits into the other category. Very nicely done. I like that. 
All right. So uh, where would your ultimate road trip be and in what car? Um, man, there's so many cool spots in the world that I still have to discover. Uh, I like to see, I like to see more of California, to be honest. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. It's that a good is. one. I like, like a bit of it, uh, probably, you know, uh, and, uh, I love to go with Nikki, my, my, my partner, of course. And then that's, it's probably, you know, uh, something with a bit of it, with where you can open your roof. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's lots of that in that. California. Yeah. 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 All right. Your favorite car movie or car from a movie or TV. doesn't matter. Um, yeah. Days of Thunder, of course. But I also liked, uh, I was just seeing it a couple of months ago. Uh, it was really sad, but it was a really good story driving in the rain. Uh, okay. Yeah. You know, like, 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 uh, and, and I also, Jason gave me the book. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but I saw the saw the video. Um, sad story, uh, but uh, that book yeah, should come with windshield wipers. It's all yeah, fun. yeah, you need some wipers there. Yeah, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> 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 yeah, but um, yeah, Days of Thunder. You know, like 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 what 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 what. There there there's there's some some good movies out there. there also, yep. the Mario versus Ford. Uh, if we, I, I think you know. We all car guys or car women. Uh, if we see some racing, we we are happier. I think. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, what would you? What car would you love to switch into that you are currently racing or raced against in the past, and at what track? You looked at that car and went, "Man, <laughs> I, I was could, in the, I could, if I was in that car, I could do some damage car. with that car." <laughs> That's too easy to win with that car. <laughs> <laughs> and the balance of performance is off. <laughs> Probably but, his own car. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, you always have to, you know, it's in every car, it doesn't matter, you know, it's an art to drive fast and then get the last second or the last stand out of it. It's, mm -hmm. it's, always, uh, it's always a challenge. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm more focused on, on my own uh, in weekends and, and sometimes, nice. of course, I complain. Uh, when, when the other, now I drive a lot, I drive a lot in, in this BMW GT4 from Jürgen, mm -hmm. Jürgensen's Strong Motorsport team. Um, I complain, of course, that the balance is off uh, by the organization. <laughs> then, then I said, "Hey, I need the I need the Aston Martin or I need the Mercedes or something like that." But uh, we always try to make it uh, work with our car. Yeah, it's all, it's always the, the the heavy race car drivers that come up with the the BOP and the I oh, just want to make the my driver. car go. You all know that, right? <laughs> oh, I know. It's it's like it, I want the BOP fixed and and my car is awesome. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's fine. It's okay. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. When, it's like the uh, the easiest way for us to tell how serious they are. It seems to be the answer that they give. Yeah, yeah, no, that you know, in the racing week we can we can make stories. <laughs> Absolutely, it's like a golfing. You know, oh, I would, you know, my uh, my grips were wet or whatever. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah I get yeah. you. No worries. Yeah. We're still drivers. We're all drivers. We know that. <laughs> exactly. So if you had the if you had a magic wand. Is there a car that you'd want to wipe away from history? Oh, man, isn't I, I, this, this is strange. Yeah, no, I never thought about that. That's an interesting thought. That's a negative thought. I don't like it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, with, I'm with you. <laughs> All right. And, um, then we need, we need something like a, a race car with three wheels or something. I don't know. <laughs> that, doesn't work. that would be bad, yeah. Especially uh, if it started with four. Whew. Uh, yeah, but the, the Delta Wing did an awesome job for a long yeah. time, but uh, I don't know. I, yeah, no, I have no idea. Sorry. No. Nope. Okay, that's okay. But, a lot of people uh, are. A lot of people like, say I love all cars, even the Aztec. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what is your what was your favorite track, or is your favorite track to race on? Um, but I said, yeah, we have a couple of really good tracks. Um, uh, or you know, I, I, had, I had the luck to drive on on many. Um, now my home track over here is, is over here in Austin is, is Coda I like, I like Coda I like the S's but I said I really enjoyed uh, Bathurst because uh, it's really challenging the wall is really close by and then every every lap you think oh yeah I made it and I made another lap so that's one of uh, one of my favorites um, 
Spa Van Gishaf course, uh, mm-hmm. Sandsford is it's 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 called my other home track. That's that's basically where where I'm born uh, because the skid school where my father was working is is it's next door. It's next to the racetrack, so I have a special special. Uh, it's, it has a special place in my heart as well. So yeah, there are a couple of tracks that I really like. Um, and there's also some tracks that I really like to go. You know, Nürburgring is, is really special. Uh, I'd also like to go to Suzuka. Um, okay. Should be a good track to drive. Uh, yeah, there, there, there are some tracks. Yeah, and I think Bathurst is, uh, is on pole position for now. No, Bathurst is in, the, in this whole spot. Okay, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, it, it's a great feeling to go uphill and and, and, and downhill and, and, and managing your brake instead of your gas pedal when you go downhill. And, and even have, you, you feel that you fly every lap a little bit and that's, that, gives, that gives a special moment. Yeah, I think uh, I, you've driven there, so, so I'll defer to you, but I know that you know, racing it and fake racing, that, that's an intimidating track. So I'm going to yeah. wait a little bit. Yeah, you, you you know I I have to be honest I I, prom- I, tra- I trained myself uh, a little bit on the sim for Bathurst but uh, when you go there you 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 don't have the feeling you you will see uh, how much it go up and down in in real life that's the same same with Spa Um if you go there if you have the possibility to go there um, yes. you will see how 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 step or uh, steep it will go downhill and uphill. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of like the first time we went to Road Atlanta. We were pulling in, and it was just like, "Oh my God!" This yeah, is- yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't see that on the Sims so much. No, not so much. No. Yeah, I knew it was. Uh, I knew I was in for a long weekend when I was intimidated just pulling my trailer into the pit. So that was uh, that was the beginning of a long week. It was fun though. We had a great time. Yeah. So, if people have any questions or they want to keep in contact with you or follow you and uh, see how things are going, is there um, places they can go? Um, I'm I'm on Instagram uh, with my full name. Um, you know, it's uh, Danny Van Dongen. It's um, yeah, um, that's that's an easy way to reach out to me. Um, uh, I'm also on Facebook, but I have to be honest, I use Instagram more than I do with uh, uh, that I do my yeah. with, my, with my Facebook. Um, if they yeah, if they need anything about tires, they can always reach out to me uh, uh, to the company. Yes. And uh, I like I love to give personal information, uh, what I just did, you know, to to other clients as well. Um, so yeah, feel free to reach out. Uh, try to uh, send me send me an email or or just call me. Uh, I like to talk. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you no can figure out. <laughs> yeah. Yep, you're you were uh, exceptionally responsive when we reached out to you. We were trying to trying to find you for a little bit, and we we talked to uh, to Ross Bentley and. He said, I just interviewed him. I said, well, that's poor timing because we're going to have a podcast out about a week after yours, but that's okay. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I was, I was late today, sorry for that. And I was just uh, my team to drop off some tires myself. And uh, no worries. I said, I have to hurry up. I have to go to a broadcast. And, and they, they said, Anon, another one again? <laughs> yeah, there's a different one. And, 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 and yeah, um, and thank you for the invite. And, and it's still new for me um, to do broadcasts in the U.S., uh, my English is getting better and better, and, and I hope everybody understands me. Uh, oh, the, I'm sure they do. It's, uh, it's, I it's, try to talk slow, but that's, that's difficult. <laughs> race, race drivers don't do anything slow, so we understand. It's okay. The, uh, <laughs> we, we do thank you for coming on. We thank you for your tires. We use them, uh, I think, on every car that we have that you have a size that works. We use it everywhere we go. Thank and, you so much. Uh, it, uh, you know, I'm not going to tell you this because, you know, they just don't wear out. No, no, that's a good thing. No, <laughs> keep driving them and they don't wear out. I know it's what I said. It's a new product for us. And, and, and what I said, I was at Daytona in the beginning of the year and, uh, and M4 GT4 was driving on it for a long time. And I know how heavy the GT4 is myself. Uh-huh. Uh, and he's no, then he has all five. He got it on the control. And I thought, oh my God, you know, like, like, I don't want to have the phone call that, 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 hey, my tire exploded <laughs> or, or something went wrong. So uh, always, you know, always keep, 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 keep safety in your mind. But, oh, we do. We do. It's just, you know, but if it works, it works, you know. Um, yeah. Um, it's awesome to see that they, they, they last so long. They do. And the, and the, the times, you know, our lap times are consistent throughout the, the multiple days that we use them for and if and if it rains you know the the little yeah now I told, I told you the trick i told you the trick you will be faster now 
No, but even if you don't, even if you don't cut them up, there, you know, we drive with them the way they are. But we had one where we drove an entire day in the rain, and it still had those little rubber nubs on them, the little uh, sticks. They they didn't yeah. even come off. No, yeah, it no. Like, it's, it's also the like you see in the Henker in the RS4, they have the logo printed in the middle mm -hmm. of the block, and um, yeah, you know, it it stays on for a long time. Of course, finally it goes, but uh, yeah. you you see it and you see it on the tire for a long time. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll be using RS4s on our team until you come out with an RS5. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No fear. Okay. And then, no I, hope, I hope to visit you guys uh, soon. Um, my, my 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 travel schedule is kind of busy at the moment because all the championships are squeezing in all the all the races. Yeah. Everything's so, crazy uh, right now. Yeah. So, uh, but but I try try to be there and 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 and, and say hi and, and and help you guys uh, in person one day. That would be great, and uh, good luck with your race this weekend. And uh, yeah. if you're bored and end up in Charlotte, come by. We'll say hi. Okay. Not a problem. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Thank you for coming. Okay. Talk to you soon, guys. Dominating with Dawson. All right, Ben. We're back again. We've got uh, Vicky and Jen with us, and we are uh, working our way through. Since we're we're kind of COVID required to stay distant, we've we've done a lot of HBDs and not a lot of racing this season, but. Yeah. Uh, they are working their way up through their HPDE uh, training schedule. And one thing that's coming up soon, I see, is um, their ability to drive is starting to get to the point where it's starting to feel a little uncomfortable. And, and as it gets better, as you go faster, there's an associated self-preservation fear factor that pops in where you actually don't push yourself because you're you're intimidated or you're scared of what could happen to you or the car or embarrassment or whatever and, and it's something people generally need to work through but um since you've apparently had that dissected out of your body i thought we'd talk about it a little bit and see if you remember back when you were human and and how it was at the time as you progressed and, and possibly things we could do to help people work with that because it is part of racing well that's uh it's very nice of you guys to think about helping me to repair my sense of fear i, I remember when i was starting to drive i started in carts and uh, the same the same thing happened when i started driving cars it, it was this, this similar phenomenon i had to learn to to trust that the vehicle and the tires could do what people were telling me they could do like i mean I, when i started car racing i could see people going out and running the track flat out and i was like whoa there's no way i'm gonna fly out the end of the course so uh, for me, one of my big issues that I had to overcome uh, was just learning to trust. I just had a big trust issue with believing that the tires were going to do what they were supposed to do each time I went around the course um, and believing that, that, I mean, it seems like you're asking a vehicle to do something that, that, I mean, I definitely took the dummy physics class, but I was there enough to realize I'm asking for a lot of different things out of the car that you don't expect the car to do. So um, I, I had to build a lot of trust before I could start to go fast. So Jennifer, this, this I think would particularly fit your personality because you're one of the people who has to approach it slowly from the, it's, yeah, from the cautious side of the world as opposed to Ben's home. <laughs> yeah. what, what, are you, what are you thinking when, when you're starting to explore a limit that you haven't done? Is it, is it something that bothers you or what? What exactly are we getting to? Um, I don't know that it bothers me because I'm aware of it. Mm -hmm. It was something I wasn't very comfortable with. So, like, it's me kind of overcoming my anxiety with, with it. Like, it's just something I've, I've resolved to conquer. Do you know what I mean? So, I, I, I know that I can as I get better, I'm more comfortable and it's, it's less fearful, but I mean, it just, I don't know, like, like every time, the whole time, the whole time I've been doing this, there, there's always been that, I guess, fear factor, you know what I mean? But it's, it's just something, it's getting better with certain things. And, and then, you know, as you progress, there's like new things you're learning and then there's another fear factor, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so you get comfortable with it. So you know it, it's a process but like that's funny i was listening to you talking you're, you're so right like there's more things to be scared of like the, the more things you 
get to like push away and not be scared of. There's more new things to be scared of. Like as soon as I got better, then I started being scared of choking in front of my buddies. Like oh, I'm gonna screw up in front of my buddies and they're gonna laugh at me, kind of being scared. Right. So yeah, it evolves. <laughs> yeah, we laugh at you, Ben. Don't worry. <laughs> but the things that I was worried about before, um, I'm not as worried about. But you know, there's still things that I I I still need to get over. But I don't know. What, what I mean, word? it wasn't like I went into to any of this, you know, thinking, yeehaw. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I, it's always just kind of been there. But it, it's something I, I really want to do. But, you know, it's, there's anxiety. He lost her. Anxiety with it. Yeah. Oh, but it it's, it's a process. So, yeah. Yeah. So, Didn't they say like anxiety and excitement are kind of the same feeling? You just have to determine which one it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For me, early on, when I first started, I first started racing carts. Like, I started this whole thing because I got I was pretty good at doing racing on a PC, and I was like, and I'd always okay. been a giant racing fan. I finally got enough money together. I got my first job out of college to get uh, some old used car. But so I was so excited to go out and do it. But I was also so I have imposter syndrome really badly. So my one of my big fears was just like being rejected just being rejected to get like ha, you don't belong here get out like just just because i was just this this crazy person but like i would like before i ever won like i think after i won my first heat race this one away but every time i would come over the hill i could see the car track for the first time like it felt like somebody dropped a bowling ball in my gut and i was just like oh you know i was so scared until i until i had some success or kind of a breakthrough but but i, I definitely can understand there's so many <laughs> different things to be apprehensive of and scared about and i always forget when I'm sitting there in a DE, like driver's meeting at a DE thing, I'm just waiting to like meet my student and get out and fix whatever. I'm waiting to fix my car, but I forget that half the people in there, maybe their first time at the track and they're sitting there with their bowels are liquefied, they're scared to death. But for me, I'm just like, all right, I gotta do this trailing arm thing, blah, blah, blah. Like, so everybody's at a different place in the journey all the time. Oh, it is. And, and also being, being female, like is there's, in some ways it, it's better but in some ways it's not like in in some ways the expectation really isn't there you know what i mean from 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 men you know what i mean like oh she's a girl <laughs> you know what i mean but then on I the other that. hand it's like you you feel pressure to to be good so yeah yeah that's a, that's an added stressor that I could definitely i, I can't yeah. i haven't coped with that i can you can't relate to that then <laughs> I can't, no, I, I can't relate, but I, I can see it. I can see it wide open. I mean, I see it at the track all the time. Yeah. Um, you know, when I see, I see the way, I see the way men treat women drivers in the track, and uh, it's uh, sometimes it's heartening. More often, it's infuriating. Yeah, but True. you know, I mean, but but again, like then, you know, if if you do something or mess up, it, it's kind of like, oh well, they really weren't expecting a whole lot anyway. So it, you know, just keep going. <laughs> so you take take the allowances you can get, right? Yeah. So, so what is it that, that are there any like generic areas that are inducing that feeling in you still, Jen? Yes. And, and actually it's nothing that I'm, I, I don't think I'm going to learn HPD one. So, um, I mean, that's why I like the HPD so much is because they, it is very controlled. Um, I do have a fear of all the cars on the track and passing and, and, just being in a group of cars and and that that's only going to get better with racing with a group of cars you know what i mean hpd is you don't have to worry about any of that because everything is so controlled and you know the passing and everybody's using hand signs and and you know but you get to the race and it's like all oh, that goes out the window <laughs> so but there there's and that's and that's partly because of you know being in the accident and yeah so but that'll get better and I know it'll get better. So yeah, it's, it's not enough to make me not want to do it, but I know it's there. So. Do you have a, do you have a bad, a bad track experience already? This, this yeah. car? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you get every, you get every allowance if you already had something bad happen to you. You definitely yeah. got plenty to work your way back from. It sounds like I, like yeah. luckily I kind of got to develop mostly without anything bad happening before I started racing. So I kind of had a, a lot of just, happy time at the track for the most part. I also had a Miata, so that was part of it too. Like nothing breaks on a Miata. Yeah. yeah. So, but it's all good. It's, it's not enough to make me not want to do it. It's just, just enough to keep me cautious. Yeah. You know? Well, it's natural too. I mean, you know, 
Well, not... absolutely. And I recognize that. So. What about you, Miss Vicky? Was this a factor for you? Vicky's um, out of fear. <laughs> I, I, uh, sometimes I, I, as I'm going around a turn full blast, mentally, I feel like I have control of the car, but pushing that limit, there is that little bit of, um, of anxiety, just a tiny bit, but it's, it's like excitement anxiety. And usually when I'm going around and I feel like I'm losing, I would be saying, oh, crap, oh, crap, oh, crap, as I'm going around a turn full blast. But the word is not crap. It usually starts with an F. So, um, oh, as, fantasy. Oh, forget about it. Oh, forget about it. Yeah. Oh, so, forget about it. Over uh, and over. She's doing that over and over the whole lap. Oh, forget about it. Yeah, I, I know what you're saying. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. And that's me <laughs> whipping around the turn going, I can do it. All my training tells me I can do it, but it's constantly pushing against that wall of courage, you know, of, First time. you know, for the breakthrough. Because I know I can do it. Yeah, that, for, that's, for you, that's your, me your next, constantly. Your, your, huh? next breakthrough, your next breakthrough is just hearing something, right? You just need to hear something to know you. I need to hear the tires. Yeah, I need so, to hear right. the tires. And, and yep. then... And you know, I'm really anxious to get back in the seat again. Um, yeah, it's 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 wild. It's, I, I realized it really before is. before this call, like I, I can't even. I, I think I used to drive race cars. Like I have a vague sense that I am somebody who used to drive race cars and now talks about it a lot. But that seems like a long mm -hmm. time since I've done it. <laughs> yeah, but I'm I'm not afraid of of car clutter, trains, of other people on the track. That doesn't bother me at all. Like I could be in very fast, close, close comp and that I'm not worried about that. It's, That's cool. It's, it's, uh, the only, the only stressors that I have is fighting for an apex. Um, and, uh, trying to make sure that I don't lose the back end because I'm, and I'm, I'm really thinking that that skip pad's really going to help me. Oh, sure. Know? I mean, I think I think a skid pad will help any driver just about any at any phase in their development. Yeah, I've never, I mean, I've never gotten to do it, but I'd love to. I mean, it's uh, I mean, it, it was it was started by the Penske team. They, they started doing it just to get their cars sorted out for a Can Am competition. Um, so obviously, it's got a, it's got a, it's got a good beginnings, and then people have used it to great effect to to get the drivers trained. I mean, in a skid pad, ideally, you get out there and the, you get the, you know you get one end going away from you, you control the slide around, so it's. It's a great. It's a great way to learn all the car control stuff that I learned at much higher stakes. Right. <laughs> not dying as a teenager. Yeah, but right. yeah, I would say nervous energy sometimes going around a turn. You know, fun, but but fun. Like I can't wait to do it again and nail it. <laughs> have you have you tried have you tried just pushing harder than you think it'll do and see what happens? Yeah, yeah, I have. And then you go off. Um, uh, sometimes. Not often, but I, I think that when I actually kind of felt that slid was, uh, or that slide in the back end was Road Atlanta. And I'm like, you know, that car slid around. They're like, well, that's what you want. And that's, when we, that's when I heard, I realized that I'm supposed to be sliding a little bit. But, you know, I kind of had it, controlled it, but I didn't control it enough to where I'd lost, I still lost speed doing it because I was uncertain. But also the first time and it was 33 degrees and raining and yeah. you were coming My into 10a 10b and your hands were the shape of a lobster claw and yeah cup yeah my hands were were frozen cupped around the steering wheel yeah, yeah. i mean as you as you go through more and more experiences with different surfaces more hpde experience you kind of develop a little fast hand shuffle i'm kind of doing it when nobody can see it on the podcast mm -hmm. but when you're kind of going to develop that the, a little correction, a little method for corrections that, you know, if the car steps out a little bit, you'll just, you'll know, you'll, you'll get a sense for how to correct it without being, being a big, a big event and move yeah. on. Your life. So, so you know, things, it seems that things that currently seem like a huge disruption to you now, uh, won't seem like a big deal once you've been doing this four or five years. Like you watch, you watch, uh, Empty guys driving around in, in an race or something like that. And they're always shuffling the wheel and working it and all that kind of stuff. Each one of those little things that they're doing, each one of those, corrections that you see on an in-car camera is a little wreck that they didn't let happen or a big wreck that they didn't let happen so it's uh mm -hmm. that's another thing that comes back around to car control is just 
uh, being able to handle the little variations and oops, I tried too hard, but here's how I catch it without it being a big deal. That's going on all the time with the folks who are super fast. So yeah. that's something, that's something to aspire to and something to work up to, but not something that's required of you right now. As long as you can keep a car on the track and are having fun driving it, that's what's required of you right now. And just keep, keep the car pushing. on the track most of the time. Yeah, but but keep pushing your limit just a little bit. Sure, you know? definitely, definitely. But, but, but uh, nobody's, yeah. saying, no, nobody's out there pushing you to do more than what you're doing except yourself. So so if, right. you're, if you're safely keeping the car out there, develop develop and, and get faster at your, at your own pace that you enjoy. Yeah. Fear is natural. Yes. Try, to push, try to push I people, a little I hear, bit. I hear people talking about it. I guess it's a thing. I don't know. Fear. Yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can grow out of it, Ben. No fear. It's courage. Okay. <laughs> it's courage. It's not fear so much as it is courage. I, okay. I lost some of my courage when I had a kid, I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. That's a, that's an impact. Nobody talks yeah. about it. All right. Sounds like uh, we're working on it. We'll keep going. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. Thanks, right. Ben. Ben. <laughs> Uh, do we do we want to do straight line braking and trail braking, or do we want to not do that? Have we hit this before? Like, now let me ask you. So, you've had people who are like, "Hey, we have you have listeners that come back and ask questions and stuff like that." I yeah, just, I can't picture if it's like one person listening to this or just me or like people actually listening. <laughs> no, to the there, show. There, really there's more than there's more than one listener. It's that's, that's so- great. I, I love that. The Christina Lamb episode was fantastic. She was I good. Yeah. I love hearing Vicky come to the front and ask a lot of questions. That was really good. Very no, good. It was. She's so shy. Except when I mess up. <laughs> I do not get that distinct impression that you are. No. <laughs> not so much. Especially but, if I mess uh, up. Do we do we already do conquering the fear factor? Is that what we were doing at the beginning, sort of? We didn't. We could. Is that something that you guys have the energy for and want to talk about? Always. Sure. I have okay. tons of energy. I am boundless. Yes, he is. That's we're right. all <laughs> It. we're gonna go until you fall over ben so you just tell me when to stop oh right. i mean i mean just that specific is that specific topic something that, that you guys no we, def- we definitely should we definitely should because that's that's kind of where jennifer and vicky are right now so that would be applicable to to that well, i mean I, what I'm, I'm also saying i'm also just trying to say i don't have any fear left so you're gonna have to kind of walk me to it we'll, we'll talk about it i'll walk it i'll walk you ben i'll hold your <laughs> hand i'll hold your hand don't be scared ben <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Hi. Hi Technical guys. difficulties. Please stand by. I can't hear anything. Which is sad for you people. Oh, wait a minute. Sounds of life. Say something. Hello. Oh wow. Okay. Hello. All right. That's really, really loud. But okay, we're good. I can change that. Zero was bad. We're much better now. There's a uh, there's a guy sneaking up behind you, sir. Oh, that's yeah, that's my <laughs> <laughs> that's my, that's my gym. Sorry. <laughs> uh, no worries. No I worries. got a little gym here um, just to prepare myself for racing. Yeah. I just didn't want it's you to a get... gym or his name is Jim. <laughs> oh no, it's my gym. I, I, technically, it's called Bob, and he misses arms. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like um, it's a good workout. <laughs> Very you know, well. I have to drive this weekend again. So, uh, oh, where are you going? Oh, in uh, in Homestead. Uh, oh, okay. For the Farah Championship, I will drive. Um, I will drive for a team that runs a P3 car over there, an LMP3. It's a Liche. Oh, nice. And, uh, we'll drive it. I, I drove it a lot in that championship, so we'll drive it this weekend. Uh, it was canceled last weekend, so now it's this weekend. Yeah, we. Uh... We got one in before the COVID thing went down, and then uh, not this weekend, but next weekend's our our first and last race. Otherwise, it's been HPDEs all year. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's kind of kind of a bummer. But hopefully, we're getting better. We'll find out when we get to the race, I guess. But 
Yeah, let's see, let's see. You know, my yeah, you know, my 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 international program is also cancelled, but um, it's um, it's okay. Uh, yeah. Next, be, next next year again. Could be worse. Yeah, yeah it could be worse. I cannot complain. <laughs> no, exactly. All right, uh, Vicky, you got your doc open. You good? I do. All right, very well. Vicky's been in the uh, garage all day. She pulled it. I'm a, a so double, tired. <laughs> oh, sorry that I'm late. I was, I was oh late. no, it's it's not that. It's just she was going to be tired no matter what time you came. So yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. It's uh... so we, you yeah. What, that... what, what 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 you guys? What what are you doing? Um, in the way that um, what was um, I'm, I, Nikki was updating me a little bit about. Oh no worries. And, so, so we started about three years ago, um, you know, Vicky and I, you know, kids and jobs got in the way. So uh, the kids are old enough now. So we said, hey, let's go start doing this again. And uh, so we'll we go did doing work. something. We, we have a wicked Peter Pan syndrome. Yeah. So, point. you know, we've always been doing something. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that's good. So we do mostly endurance racing and um, we do some cross training, we call it. We do some autocross and then we're, we're talking about going to do some ice racing and we just had somebody on who's doing rally racing. So we're, we're trying to figure out how to get better at driving in general and, you know, and uh, so, but endurance racing, you just get so much seat time for the dollar. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we're going to go have a, uh, a lucky dog race in two weeks in Charlotte. Oh, cool on the roll and uh yeah. we did laguna seca in january but uh you know usually we get like six or seven races in and then we do four or five hbds a year so we're just trying to and then we always do one away race yeah, we or do one, one away, away something so yeah. we take a road trip with the team yeah so we, we try to stay sharp but uh well, it's been but tough because because we are technically beginners um the, the reason why we started this podcast was because there was a lot of people um, or there are people that are interested, but they have no idea on how to get into it. And we were one of those people. There was a lot of yeah. jargon. There was a lot of, um, of startup stuff that we just didn't know. And we had to kind of find out the hard way. Yeah. So we started this podcast to kind of take you back and to show you some of the fundamentals that we learned along the way. Yeah. And, and it's kind of like people watching us through our mistakes <laughs> and our successes. So, yeah. and then we just kind of bring things in on a, on a, you know, a level before things get complicated yeah, or yeah, yeah. if that makes any sense. So we're well, advocating uh, yeah. for people stepping into the sport. <laughs> it's, 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 yeah, you know, you need to find your way around and that's not easy for me. I'm born into it. So my father mm -hmm. was a car driver and, 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 I started racing or first co-karting and then I moved up, of course. So for yeah. me, it's all normal, but you know, I, I have to question a lot. Uh, and, and, and that's, that's a sidekick that you guys don't know, but I also own a race school in Holland. Oh, we, <laughs> we know that. That's on my list. Oh, my oh, notes. Oh, okay. I don't know how much you did some research about my, about me. So, yeah, uh, but, but that's the, what I said, you know, we made it really simple over there just to, see you know what what you have to do and, and and how to get your race license and 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 we made the concept over there that you can get your official race license 24 hours right and, and from that point we keep our clients and, and and try to guide them in the right direction um um what they want to do you know it can be can be some something like like club racing can be professional racing it's it's yeah, right. it's, it's it's how crazy you want to make it. <laughs> yeah, we're just yeah. we're trying to get people. You know, the if you're if you like cars or you're into cars or you're even just you know you like going the long way. That's the curvy way to work. You yeah, know, let's start doing something that doesn't have to be racing. It could just be an HPD day. It could just be you know mm -hmm. going out autocross and just just yeah, yeah, yeah. go do something. And, and yeah. part of it was even just setting up a paddock. You know, yeah. you think yeah. what you do and what you don't do. And then I, the, another big discussion was just the organization of a paddock and how to run one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was tough when you have a lot of people and you have teenagers involved too. I mean, it was nuts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. No, but uh, and what kind of car do you run? What kind of car do you so, have? So we have, our, our team has grown. So we started off with, one car and then we went to two cars and now we're up to like, I don't even know how many cars. So we have 
uh, three primary racing cars. We have a, an E36 BMW. We have yeah. uh, a Chevy S10 pickup truck, race truck, which is uh, kind of our beginner okay. car. Okay. And then, and then we have two um, Honda Civics. Okay. From, from the 90s, just to, to round out, you know, yeah. why I have all rear wheel drive when you can mess people up and get them in a front wheel drive car. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then uh, HPD cars, we have uh, an NB Miata and ND Miata. Uh, let's see what else we have a Toyota 86. We have a E46 M3. We have an okay. E46 330. And uh, a new ish like uh, M240i. Okay. So uh, we we try to get all around, and you know most of the stuff we do is we do t- probably two to one ratio on a normal year. We probably try to do two HPDEs and one uh, track race. And um, you know, right now I'm working my way up through the HPD schedule because I want to be a useful to our team as a coach or an instructor. Okay. Um, so I'm I'm going towards AP, HPDE three in about three weeks and then you know hopefully i was planning on doing it this year but with everything getting canceled it's probably not going to happen i'll get the four next year and then i'll be able to to do what i need to do so okay so and, we're and, uh, and most of the time we drive in california no we drive on the east coast we're over on the east coast oh. side oh okay okay, okay. The, yeah the, the west coast. no oh, okay. so so our team um our family's in pennsylvania and a few of our friends are here and then another family um Vicky's sister and, and family is in Delaware and then a uh, friend of the family is in Connecticut. So we're kind of a Northeast cluster and then oh, we travel. Okay. So we travel to lucky dog race. We've done two out there. We've done uh, Laguna Seca in Portland. Yeah. yeah. And, and then um, we did Gingerman kind of a central race. And okay. then most of the time we're doing the East coast races, but when lucky dog decided they were going to have their first ever East coast race, we told Kathy, we got to go. So that's where we yeah. were. Yeah. And now and now and now we're very committed, yes. even with COVID, which is scaring us very Scar- badly. Scaring. Yeah, you know, you have to. You have to. I have. To, I have. To, I had. To, I had to travel a lot uh, last month with with the tire service and then for the racing and things like that. And yeah, you had to follow the procedure. You know. Um, yeah. Thankfully, um, mm-hmm. I did a couple of tests already, and and I'm wearing a mask during the events. And yeah, you have to sit in the in, in the plane, of course, but. Um, yeah, so far so good, I have to say. It's, um, good for you. Keep it that way. Yeah, we have a uh, we have company coming from who's going to be using our uh, our race car seats. They're friends of ours. They're um, a deaf team, so oh. yeah, it's going to be interesting. We have to prep our paddock for deaf racers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's going to be fun. Everybody's going to have those text to speech to text on their yeah. phones, so they can easily communicate. Oh, that works. And then yeah, you probably have to bring um, the, the pit, pit boards again and then yep. get in the pit lane and things like that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It'll be fun. <laughs> it's always it'll fun. be actually, it'll, it'll be a little bit challenging and it'll be fun at the same time. It'll be a very good experience. Yeah. No, there's, there's, there's a, a Dutch co-kart uh, driver, uh, Ben um, Bas Lammers. Uh-huh. He's world champion uh, in shifter co-karts and mm-hmm. he's deaf as well. But uh, you know, he's, he's bloody fast, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, can, we can intimidate one of the teams next to us in the paddock. We'll just start screaming at them. And, you know, they'll just sit there and look at us with a straight face. And, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even know what we're saying, but that's okay. And then we usually end with like a, uh, a quick uh, series of questions. We call them the Fast and Furious questions. They're kind of like, what was your first car? You know, kind of okay. like that. So, yeah, they're, they're kind of fun. <laughs> Oh, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, Vic, Vicky's always like, and now for the fun part. I'm like, this has been fun the whole time. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. It's good. All okay. Right. All right. So.